Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Reading for Vocabulary. Are you ready to continue with the lessons? Great, because we're going to be starting today with lesson four. The unit title is Dynamic Earth, and our lesson title is Fire Under the Earth. Do you know there's a fire under the earth? We're going to talk about that in this lesson. So we will focus on, let's learn about a volcano. Do you know what a volcano is? Well, we have a video here of what a volcano looks like. I'm sure you've seen them on television, right? Here we have a mountain, as you can see, and look at this, there's fire coming out of the mountain. Let's look at the video, okay? Wow, look at that. All of this fire is coming out from the top of the mountain. Where is it coming from? Well, it's coming from deep below the surface of the earth. And that's what our lesson is about today. Now, before we get into uh, too much into the lesson, of course, we have to review some important vocabulary words. So let's begin with the first one. The first one, we have a picture here. This looks like Yellowstone National Park, which is a park, a very famous park, in America where hot water comes out of the ground. It comes out very suddenly and in great volume. It suddenly comes up, shoots up into the sky. Now there is a very specific verb we can use to describe exactly that action. What is that verb? That verb is gush, to gush. So we use to gush to explain when something suddenly and in a lot of volume comes out, not just of the earth. You know, sometimes people gush too. D do you have a friend who talks very fast and very quickly and they say a whole lot of stuff? They are gushing. So you can say, my friend gushes, right? That means that they're talking very quickly and they are saying many things very suddenly. So many things gush, right? Of course, in this lesson, we're going to be talking about things that gush from up under the earth. Okay, let's move on to the next word. Here we have some three pictures or a picture of three objects, right? And it says water or oil, but really to be honest, it's not just water or oil. It's any substance that doesn't have a shape that you can pour into a container. You can pour out of a container. If you pour it out, it flows over the ground or it goes into the ground. What type of uh, substance is that? We say that that is liquid, liquid right? Liquid. It's liquid. Water is liquid. Oil is liquid. That video that we saw of the volcano, that's actually liquid rock. Isn't that amazing? Rock can be liquid. We'll talk about that some more later. Okay, the next one. Wow, this looks very, very, very old, doesn't it? When we look at something like this, these are ruins, right? Ruins from a very, very old civilization. You've probably read about Rome or a long, long time ago in China or even in Korea. We can see ruins. They're very old. Another word for very old, it's an adjective that we use. It's ancient, ancient. It's a little bit maybe a difficult word. So ancient, ancient, ancient. These are ancient ruins. Okay, let's move on. Wow, very neat picture. That's really cool looking, isn't it? Very beautiful, right? Here, of course, we can see another volcano. This is another volcano here. And actually, we can see many volcanoes, right? To throw out violently. If something is being thrown out violently, what do we say? We say it's erupting, to erupt. When a volcano, begins to throw out the very hot rock and smoke and ash and also ash. Ash is, you know, when you have a fire and the smoke goes out. Sometimes 
pieces of the of the smoke fall from the sky onto your arm, right? That's ash. It's actually pieces of the wood that fly up in the air and come down on your arm. So ash. All of this stuff, smoke, ash, molten rock, is thrown out of the volcano when the volcano erupts. Okay? Next word. Now, we're talking a lot, right? I keep talking about the hot melted rock, but there's a better word for it, right? There's a better word for it. The hot melted rock that comes out of a volcano, we have a specific word for it. What is it? It's called lava, right? Before I taught you ash, that's one of the things that comes out of a volcano. The other one is smoke, and finally we have lava. Lava is very dangerous, isn't it? <laughs> It's, uh, it's also difficult to pronounce, lava, lava, okay? It's hot melted rock. Imagine rock that is so hot, it's red and it's liquid. Don't go near that, it's really dangerous, right? So you should not be close to a volcano when it erupts, right? Because if the lava touches you, whew, that's really dangerous. So you don't want to be close to the lava. Okay. Here's a cute picture. <laughs> What's going on with this kitten, right? It's a kitten, a baby cat, a kitten. So it was born not long ago. Another word for not long ago, we can say recently recently. So when we add ly, it's an adverb. It describes, you know, when it happened recently. Recent, well, how recent? It was recently, okay? So recently means it was not long ago. Recently. A little bit difficult pronunciation. Recently. 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 Remember, recent is just an adjective. Recently Add L-Y to say, answer the question, how? How was it, right? Recently. Okay. Number, whoa, what's wrong with this lady? She looks very strange. <laughs> well, she has many arms, right? Well, what this picture is showing is that she has many things to do. She's very, very busy, isn't she? To be busy doing something. So, Unfortunately, she doesn't have six arms, right? Maybe she wishes she had six arms, but she's very busy. She's doing many things, so she is very active. Active. If somebody is active, that means that they're busy or that they are doing something. By the way, what's the opposite of active? You could say passive. When we talk about people, People are active or sometimes people are passive. That means sit back. Sometimes you are passive, right? Oh, you had a long day at school. You go home, oh, I just want to rest, want to watch TV. You are being passive. We use active and passive for people, but we also use active for volcanoes. If a volcano is active, that means it can erupt soon. But we don't say, we don't really use passive for volcanoes. If a volcano is dead and it will not erupt, then we say it's dormant. Dormant. So dormant is used for volcano. A volcano is dormant. It's a little strange to say a volcano is passive. People are passive. Volcanoes are dormant. Okay, let's move on. Number eight, sleeping. Now this is our word here, dormant, that I just taught you, right? We say people are passive, but we say volcanoes are dormant. And it says sleeping here. So, you know, volcanoes aren't really awake, <laughs> right? They're not really sleeping. They're either active or they're dormant, okay? Of course, in this picture, this volcano has been dormant. It looks like it's uh, been dormant for a long time. It has snow on it, or maybe it's just winter, right? And there's a lot of snow there. But this volcano is not active. It's not erupting, so it's dormant. Sometimes people can say the volcano is sleeping, but that's kind of a, a poetic way to describe it. It's kind of like, oh, the, the mountains are sleeping, the forest is sleeping. But usually the technical or scientific word is dormant. 
Okay, next one. Hot melted rock found inside the earth. We saw this picture before. When you see this picture, do you remember the word we just learned a little, a few seconds ago? Lava? Well, this is different. This word is magma. So magma is hot melted rock found inside the earth. And you're probably thinking right now, what's the difference between lava and magma? It's a good question, right? The, the difference is location. Location. In other words, where is it? This one says found inside the earth. If it's underground, if it's deep inside the earth, we say it's magma. But when the magma comes to the surface, when it comes out of the volcano, now it's in a different location. It's on the surface and then it is lava. Okay, so maybe let me do this differently. A surface, if it's on the surface, it is lava. But if it is inside the earth, it is magma. So it all depends on the location. Where is it? On the surface, lava. Inside the earth, magma. So we have different words for depending on whether it, whether, where it is, on where it is. Okay. Number 10, wow, where is that? That's not on Earth, that's on the moon, right? The outside of an object. But when we talk about the moon, of course the astronauts didn't go in the moon, right? They walked where? They walked on the surface, on the surface, on the surface of the moon, right? On the surface of the moon, on the surface of the Earth. We don't live in Earth, right? We live on the Earth, right? We live on the surface of the Earth, okay? So the outside of an object is the surface, okay? Next one, a mountain with a hole in the top. A mountain with a hole in the top. We've already talked about this word. I've used it several times already. Of course, we're talking about a volcano volcano. We don't really pronounce the L. You don't say volcano. You say volcano. Volcano. Okay? So, of course, we're talking about this. It's a mountain. There's a hole in the top and smoke, ash, and lava come out of the volcano. Erupt. Okay. Number 12. If you're looking at a map, let's say you're here and you want to go there, well, that's not far away. It's not far, right? If it's far, it's, oh, mood a while, right? Mood a while. But it's kaka while, right? Not far away. We say nearby, nearby, nearby. Or you could also say close. It's close. It's nearby. It is close. It is nearby. Where is the post office? Oh, don't worry. It's nearby. It's close. It's not far. Kakawayo, right? Okay. Next one. A scientist. Do you want to be a scientist like this? This looks like an exciting job, looking and studying the heavens. This is a scientist who studies outer space. Of course, there are many, many scientists. Scientists study different things. Some scientists study life. They're biologists. Some scientists study the earth. They're geologists. But this is a scientist who studies outer space. Ooh, right? Out the moon, the planets, the stars. What do we call that scientist? We call that scientist an astronomer. That's a big word, right? Astronomer. 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 So we say astronomer is a scientist who studies outer space. Okay. Number 14. This is a fun thing to do in the summertime. Maybe you go to Kwangwa Moon in Seoul or City Hall uh, and they have a fountain uh, coming from the sidewalk, right? Uh, and that's very fun to play in in the summertime. Well, a stream of water going into the air, I just said it, it's a fountain. 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 Okay, two sounds. Fountain. A fountain. And many kids like to play 
in the fountain during the summer. Okay, so the next word here, we have a picture of, of very hot liquid, and it's something that wasn't liquid before, to become liquid by heating. Now, before we've talked about rock, rock being so hot, it turns into a liquid. That's really amazing, isn't it? But if you think about it, everything on the earth, all the material you can think of, if you heat it up, at a high temperature, it turns from a solid into a liquid. It goes from solid to liquid. Now, what word do we use to describe this action? We say melt, to melt. LT at the end, ult, melt, melt. So if something melts, it turns from a solid to a liquid. It becomes liquid by a lot of heat. We can see melting every day. If it's a hot summer day and you have ice cubes in your water, those ice cubes will melt. So ice melts very easily. Ice cream melts easily. You have to eat it quickly, right? Now don't eat it too quickly, right? But ice cream will melt. Sometimes people like the melted ice cream. That's also good. Okay, this is our last word. And look at the picture. Wow, it makes you really sleepy, right? It's like Pyeonghanhan, right? Very peaceful. There's nobody, no people in the picture. All we can see is just like an empty dock. The boat is empty, nobody's there. The sea is very calm. Everything is very peaceful and what? Quiet. Without much noise or activity. So imagine if you're there, you don't hear much noise, maybe a little bit of noise from the water, but it's soothing, it's peaceful. There's no activity, nobody's running around or making noise, the waves are very calm, it's very quiet, very quiet scene, very peaceful. Okay, it's time to begin the exercises for the vocabulary. In this exercise, it says exercise two, we're skipping exercise one, right to exercise two, we're using a paragraph. So we're looking at a paragraph and we need to complete the paragraph. There are blanks in the paragraph. We need to choose the right word to put in the blank to finish the paragraph, okay? So what are our words? We have five words here. First one is gush, gush. Next, erupt, erupt. Next one, active, active. The next one, dormant, dormant. And the final one, liquid, liquid. Those are our five words. We have to choose which word is the best to put into these blanks. Let's take a look. The first sentence, have you ever seen a volcano? Then we have a blank. We're looking probably for a verb here because have you ever seen a volcano do something? Well, what do volcanoes do, right? We talked about that. Which, well, first of all, if we look at our words, only two of them are verbs, right? And the two verbs are gush and erupt. Does a volcano gush or does it erupt? Remember before we talked about a volcano erupts, okay? So a volcano or uh, uh, something that's a geological uh, formation, like a volcano, erupts. That erupts. It doesn't gush, right? That's a different meaning. We'll see that next, actually. So, have you ever seen a volcano erupt? It's an amazing thing to see. This is all connected. It's all one paragraph. So, have you ever seen it? Have you ever seen a volcano erupt? Maybe you've seen one erupt on television or in the movies. I don't think you've seen one erupt in real life. That's kind of rare. Thank goodness. But anyway, you've probably seen a volcano erupt on the television or in the movies. It's amazing. If you do see a volcano erupt in real life, wow, it's really incredible. But of course, be careful, right? Uh, pay attention to what the police and people tell you about active volcanoes. Anyway, it's an amazing thing to see. I like watching the lava beep out from the top. So the lava, what does the lava do, right? We have two verbs here, right? I said we have two verbs. Gush and erupt are both verbs. We used erupt. We need another verb here. 
it's going to be gush, right? Now that's interesting. Think about this for a minute. Volcanoes don't gush, they erupt. Lava doesn't erupt, it gushes. What's the difference? What's going on? A volcano is the thing, right? It's the geological feature. It explodes. It erupts, okay? It doesn't gush. What, what the, the substance that comes out of it, that's what gushes, okay? So the lava gushes. Or before on the slide we saw before, at the very beginning, we saw water coming out of the ground. The water was coming out of a geyser. A geyser is similar in this sense to a volcano. Of course, a geyser isn't a big mountain. It's a hole in the ground where water comes out of. The geyser erupts, water gushes. So you see, the thing, whether it's a volcano or a geyser, that's the geological thing, object. It erupts. The substance that comes out, that gushes. So that's a good difference. That's a good thing to remember. Okay, the lava looks like, beep, fire. What kind of fire? Is it active, dormant, or liquid fire? Remember when we saw the video? It looked like, the rock looked like a what? Liquid. It looked like a liquid. So the lava looks like liquid fire. It's like a liquid that is on fire. And actually, it's very dangerous. It is a liquid, and if you touch it, your skin will become on fire. So don't touch lava. Don't get near lava, okay? So those are our words. Have you ever seen a volcano erupt? It's an amazing thing to see. I like watching the lava gush out from the top. The lava looks like liquid fire. Continuing on the slide, but I've only seen lava once. That's because most volcanoes aren't, are not what okay so think about this I said it's rare to see a volcano erupt because uh, most volcanoes are not what if a volcano is erupting is it is it active or is it passive most volcanoes are not active and that's a good thing right Whew. we don't want most volcanoes to be active because that would be dangerous for the people around the volcano most vo volcanoes aren't active. Most of them are what? What's the opposite? Pandero of active. The opposite of active is dormant. Dormant. So most volcanoes are not active. They don't erupt. They're dormant. They are like sleeping. They don't uh, have any action. They are quiet. Okay, well that wraps up the vocabulary uh, exercises. Let's take a short break and we'll come back and do the reading. Mm -hmm.